Today, 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 we talk about, we talk about, talk about, about delay, 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 delay. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. As promised in the last video in our audio series on Echo, today we're going to be talking about delay. So Echo and delay are very, very similar. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I can tell a difference other than some of the small nuances when you're working with the effect as far as the knobs and the dials and that kind of stuff. I think I would generally choose a delay over echo, but they're both going to give you very similar results. So again, as a lot of these effects are, it's the kind of thing where you're going to have to play with it on your clip and see what gives you the desired result that you're looking for. But hey, if you're new here and you're just getting going on this audio series here, my name is Jay Yudlowski and on my YouTube channel here, we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve, getting started, tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff in DaVinci Resolve because let's be honest, it's a tough program and there's a lot to learn, right? We also talk about some YouTube tips and how you can help grow your YouTube channel as well as cover some gear stuff because, hey, we all love some gear stuff, right? Well, most of us do anyway. So without further ado, we are going to jump into DaVinci Resolve here. We're going to throw the delay effect on a couple sample clips here, give it a try, and see how it works. We're going to get started by going over the whole window, and I'm going to explain each and every knob and button to you, just like we have in the rest of our audio series videos so far. So if you guys are finding this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button for me, would you? Hey, subscribe while you're at it too, and uh, hit that bell too. Let's jump into Resolve and check it out. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and real quick, again, any audio work, I'm always going to go ahead and use a good pair of headphones if you got them or some AirPods or whatever you might have that might be a little better than your computer speakers. So I always use my headphones, got the Sony, uh, what are these guys? I forget what they're even called. They're so old. MDR V6. So uh, if you're interested in those, you can check out link in the description. So we are in the Fairlight tab here. And if you want to get into the Fairlight tab and you're not sure how to get there, come and click on these little musical icons down here at the bottom of the screen. That'll bring you into the Fairlight tab. Next thing you want to do is make sure that you've got your mixer open. If you don't, come on up to the top of the screen here. You should see this mixer and go ahead and open that up. If for some reason you don't see mixer here, you can come over to Workspace, Show Panel in Workspace, and make sure you've got mixer checked on. Once you've got your mixer on, we're going to want to add in the delay effect. So in my mixer here, you can see I have the word effects with a little plus sign next to it. Now, if you don't see the effect sign here, sometimes you might not. Just go ahead and click on these guys, come down and make sure that you have effects turned on. Coming back into the mixer, if uh, your screen is small or you're working on a small laptop, you may need to use the middle mouse wheel to scroll up and down through your items here to find effects, or you can actually uncheck any of these other items and turn them off if you want to. So to add the effect, again, come to the effects section, click on the plus. We want to go to delay, Fairlight effects, and this time we're going to choose delay instead of echo. So here is our delay window. A quick note, now delay will work on either a mono or stereo channel. I don't think it'll work on like a 5.1 surround sound, although I'm not 100% positive, but I think it's mainly just a stereo and mono channels that this will work on. The effect itself is a stereo effect, so it's going to use left and right speakers uh, as you hear the effect. So that's one thing you can keep in mind. So let's go over the window here. And uh, as always, we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So right at the top, we've got our reset all. We've got the three little icons here, lock plugin window and preset manager. I'm not sure why you would ever lock the plugin window. It's in all the effects, but uh, I, don't know, I never use it. But anyway, it's there in case you want to check it out. Moving down again, you've got the option to save presets. So if you uh, click on the plus here, you can save a preset. And under default here, there are no presets that come in the effect, but you can add some and they would pop up right here. Again, the arrows, they cycle through your effects. So if you have multiple effects, you can just click on the arrow and cycle through. The toggle A and B buttons. Toggle A and B are going to allow you to set two different settings on the effect. So you can try it one way, hit the B button, try it a different way, and you can make those changes back and forth. And if you want to know a little bit more about how to use that, link above, go check out the uh, Quick Tip Tuesday we did on the A-B toggle button. Moving on down, we've got delay with our red button. This turns the effect on and off. Over to the right, we've got our input format, and this is a stereo channel that I'm using, so that's what it's set up as. Below that, we have our graphic representation of what the delay is looking like, and it's going to show you the strength of the signal as well as the time in which it takes to delay. So it goes up to two seconds currently. So as we make changes down below that, you're going to be able to see the changes up here. On the right here, we have output. This is our output meter that's going to tell you what the levels of your audio are coming out of the effect. So it's good to look at that once you're done making all your changes to see if you lost a little bit of signal. 
A quick note, sometimes you do lose signal as you're running uh, your audio through various effects, so you may need to boost the gain back up or uh, increase the levels a little bit just to kind of gain back what you might have lost through processing of a particular effect. So good thing to know. And moving down to the bottom section here where the meat of the effect is, we've got our filters right here. And we've seen these before. This is a high cut filter. So anything that is above wherever we set it is going to get cut out. And anything that's below that amount will pass through into the effect. And likewise, the low cut is going to cut out anything below a certain frequency and allow anything else to pass through it. So if you're not sure where all these frequencies fall, definitely think about EQ and link above. You can go check out the video I did on EQ to get a little more info about that and where frequencies are and uh, where you might find various uh, things in those frequencies. So the next two sections here, right and left, this is where the sound will be going on this particular channel, left side and right side. And the settings are the same. So we have delay time. Delay time is how long do you want that initial delay to be? And this is in milliseconds. And you have the option to go from zero all the way up to 1.2 seconds on both the right and the left channels here. Then we have feedback below that. So feedback is what percentage of the effect you want it to feed back into itself. And these are gonna cause different effects. Uh, it's just something you're gonna have to try and play with and see what gives you the desired result that you want. Moving over to the next section, we have feedback and we have high ratio up here. And what high ratio does is adjust the frequency of a dampening filter for the feedback signal that's coming through the effect. Below that, we have stereo blend. And stereo blend is gonna adjust the proportion of the feedback from side to side. So not only is the right and left channel feeding back into itself a little bit, but they're also feeding into each other a little bit, kind of a little right to left uh, feedback or left to right, you know, back and forth. So the stereo blend adjusts the percentage that they're feeding across the right to the left, as opposed to just feedback on the right and just feedback on the left. It's crossing it and kind of blending it together a little bit. Moving to the final section here, we have output and we have our wet dry mix. And again, keep in mind that dry, so if I crank this all the way over, dry means that none of the effect is getting applied to my audio. And if I cranked it all the way up, that means 100% of the effect is being applied to my audio on this track. And to reset any of these, you can just go ahead and double click it and it's gonna reset it to the default settings. And looks like default here is about 30%. So I would try that, see how it sounds and kind of adjust to taste or make adjustments based on what you're looking for. And the last item here is level. Now level's gonna boost that gain a little bit that you might lose by your audio going through this clip and being processed. So if you look at your output meters at the end and you notice eh, it's a little low, you could be using a little more uh, gain on there. You wanna boost up the levels a little bit. You can apply some levels after the effect is applied to the clip. And as it exits the effect, you can boost your levels a little bit if you need a little extra gain on there. So that comes in handy sometimes. So that's an overview of the effect window and how it works. Now let's get into that sample that you saw right in the beginning. We're gonna just uh, come up with some settings and it may not match what was there because I might change it uh, by the time I finish this video. But I'm gonna show you just how this effect works and what it sounds like right off the bat here. So here is our clip. I'm gonna turn off the delay so you can hear what it sounds like with no delay and let's play that. Today, we talk about delay. Okay, so today we talk about delay. Now, if I turn on the delay, Let's just see what it has. I'm going to hit the reset button here. Just with its default settings, what do we got? Today, Today we, talk we talk about, about delay. delay. All right, so you notice the delay time is not that long. And keep in mind, when it comes to delay, it's saying the same thing over and over again. It's not like reverb where it's bouncing around and uh, you're getting reflections of the sound. It's actually taking the same thing and repeating it, very similar to how the echo works that we talked about last week. So in here, it looks like the delay time is pretty short. So now let's try making that delay time a little bit longer and just seeing what we get. So I'm gonna come up here and uh, let's say, I wanna come up to, I don't know, let's say around 700 milliseconds, 702. I don't know, let's try that. So we'll put this somewhere similar, see how that sounds, and we'll play through that. Today, today we talk today, about, we talk about, we talk about delay, 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 delay. So you can hear how it fades over time. There's a bigger gap between uh, the delay sounds where we hear it, I say it at once, and then it'll delay and say it again and say it again. And adjusting your delay time is going to affect how quickly you hear that repeat. So now let's say I want to add more of the effect in there. Well, I don't necessarily want to increase the delay time. I'm going to actually go to the wet-dry mix and boost that up a little bit. So looking over here at the output, wet-dry mix is at 30. 
Let's crank it up to 60 and see what we get with that. Today, today, we talk today, about, we talk about, we talk about delay, about, delay, delay. So you can hear it added in more of the effect, although we didn't change the delay time, it did add in more of that effect because we increased that wet-dry mix, right? So dry is no effect applied, and wet is applying more of the effect, 100% being the full-blown effect. So if we just crank this up to 100 here, what do we get with that? Today, today we talk about, we talk about, we talk about delay, delay. So it really just depends on the sound that you're looking for, right? And it could just play with these things a little bit. Depends on your clip. You know, what are you going for? Is it somebody yelling off a cliff or, uh, I don't know, some other situation where you might want some delay on that voice? And for me, I think I would pick delay over the echo only because I'm just more familiar with delay and uh, for whatever reason, it just sounds better to me. I don't know. I don't really have a reason, but I just would pick delay over echo. One more example I want to show you is when it comes to music, because for me, that's where I would use delay um, on music. When I'm mixing music, uh, most of the time, you know, live music at my church, or I've got some tracks here that I recorded. So let's jump over to another example so you can just kind of hear how delay can really uh, enhance things. All right, back to Resolve here. I'm in the Fairlight tab again, and I've got a couple different tracks going on here. I've got a vocal track. I've got an electric guitar, I've got keyboards, right and left channel, and I have a bass track. So what I want to do is just play through here without any delay, and then I want to play through it with some delay, just so you can see how it uh, adds a lot of richness. And I did two different um, styles of delay, two different settings that I used that AB toggle for, it came in very handy, just so you can hear the difference and get an idea of uh, how you might use delay, and for me, generally I'm going to use it on music and, and vocals and stuff like that, or uh, instruments. But, I, don't, I mean, for the kind of YouTube videos I make, most of the time I'm not going to be using delay. But uh, this is an instance where I would use it. So I just want you guys to hear how that sounds. So let's play through this and hear it first with no delay. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. All right, so that's with no delay. Now let's go ahead and add in uh, our first uh, settings on delay here, and you can see how that sounds. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Okay, so I think that sounds a lot better, right? It kind of fills things out. It just gives it more life and more vibrance. Um, now we want to try another set of settings where I used a longer delay time. So let's go ahead and I uh, use the AB toggle for this. Click on A. Now let's play through the next little bit here and just kind of see how that sounds. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. All right, so that is another example there of how you can use a longer delay time, and it almost sounds like two people singing. I mean, I don't know about you guys, I kind of like it, you know? Obviously, if this was going to be something that I was going to use, real production stuff, you'd play with it some more, fine-tune it and all that. But I just want you guys to get an idea of how it works and how it sounds and how it can really enhance something, okay? So maybe for your particular video, you've got somebody singing, or uh, maybe you just want some delay for something else. So that's it, guys, for this one. That is the delay effect here in DaVinci Resolve Fairlight. Awesome effect. Again, you can use it on the channel or on a clip by itself. You just drag and drop it on the clip instead of doing it on the channel. So if you guys found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up for me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Oh, hit that bell too. Definitely hit the bell. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.